to speak about some of their personal travels and some of your favorite foods that you've tried um, in your own country or that you've tried abroad when you've traveled to different places. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys right away. Um, and I'll give you, we're going to look at two different articles, two different sources of information. Oh, we had Carolina join us too. Hi, Carolina. Hi, hi again. <laughs> hi, nice to see you again. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, fine. Good, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so we have two articles here in the Verbling chat box. So you guys can try to open those in your own browser if you like, or you can follow along on the screen. But um, we're going to talk about all of these different amazing foods that you can try when you're traveling. And um, we're using the Verbling chat here. So um, can, is it working for everyone, the Verbling chat? Okay, okay. Um, and we had Saiban also join us. Hi, Saiban. Hey, teacher. Hi, how are you? Fine, fine. Thank you, teacher. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Nice to see you again. Thank you for joining the class. Good to see you. Um, okay, so we can look at um, some different walking tours for first for people that love to travel, people that love food. Um, maybe we could ask Ana Carolina, have you heard this term before, a foodie? Could you tell us what is a foodie? Uh, teacher, I, I have never heard it before. Sorry. Okay, no, it's all right. Um, Ali, have you heard this expression? Or Carolina, have you guys heard uh, about foodie? I can guess. Okay. Maybe, maybe someone who likes food <laughs> or follows uh, the, cuisine, the cuisine of every country or something like that. Okay, very good. Um, and so we have like a definition here of the word. It's it's kind of like a slang word, but it's becoming more and more popular. Um, maybe Ana from Brazil, could you read that definition for us? Sure. Uh, food. No. Uh, food. <laughs> no, I can. I. Oh, sorry. sorry. A person with a particular interest in food. A gourmet. Uh -huh, very good. So you can see um, that this wasn't a very popular word before, but now it's becoming extremely popular. And uh, Wikipedia talks about foodies here. They say it's a person who has an ardent or refined interest in food and alcoholic beverages. A foodie seeks new food experiences as a hobby rather than simply eating out of convenience or hunger. So um, they're people that just, they love food, they love trying new things, um, and they're kind of like food experts, <laughs> and it's kind of like a hobby for them, the foodie. So we can see that word here in the title of the article, the top 10 walking tours for globe trotting or um, traveling foodies. <laughs> so um, we can go ahead and get started here, maybe we can ask Anna. If you could read the little introduction here. Okay. The best and tastiest way to fast track your understanding of a city's cuisine is to embark on a guided walking tour that includes sampling the local food, tucking into the best offerings from street food stalls, meet chefs at cafes and restaurants, and local producers at markets. Best of all, undertake a tour when you first arrive in a city and you will have a mouth-watering hit list of places to return to. Oh, very good. Um, so this is a really nice way to um, to see a city and try all the local food is to take one of these walking tours. And so um, they list some different walking tours. I'll try to make this bigger so everyone can see. Um, and the first destination is in 
Vietnam. So it talks about some of the street food in Vietnam. And um, maybe we could read the description of this. Um, of this walking tour here. And Ali, maybe I could ask you to read the description for us of Vietnam. Where it says tours kick off. Oh, Ali, are you there? Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I just missed you on that. Uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, tours kick off at the busing. Uh, Chow Long Market in Hanoi's labyrinth, um, labyrinthine old quarter before a multi-course, multi-location feast of local street food including pho bowl, beef noodle soup, uh, robust baan shio, yeah. <laughs> <xiu, laughs> egg creeps and uh, Gossamer? Uh, Gossamer light ban chon, steamed uh, right, uh, res, uh, steamed right crepe filled with min, uh, minced pork, shallots, and mushrooms. Um, tours usually conclude at the Ramshackle Cafe Doi Tree 43A P Yun 4 for. Sua Chua Cha Fe, coffee with yogurt. I'm sorry. It's okay. Very nice reading. I know it's really hard to pronounce those words in Vietnamese. <laughs> I can't really pronounce them either. Yeah. yeah, nice job though. And have you heard of a labyrinth before? Do you know what a labyrinth is? Uh, labyrinth is uh, the kind of a cutting, I think, that they make on the Bushes is 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 that called labyrinth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's like a maze. Yeah, it's, it's a maze. Uh huh, it's a maze, right, mm -hmm. right. and you can see kind of like these are images of a maze here. Oh yeah, true. And uh, we had Laïs join us too. Hi, Laïs. Oh, Laïs, you muted your microphone. Maybe you can unmute your microphone. Hey. Yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Okay, cool. Very nice. We have another student from Brazil today, too, Anna. Have you met Anna before? No. Okay. It's kind of my first class. <laughs> okay, okay. Very nice. Thanks for joining us. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, so um, so normally we can keep our microphones muted while the other students are talking. That way, there there's no echo. Yeah, perfect. And then whenever it's our turn to talk, then we just turn our microphone on. So um, yeah, very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and look back. We were talking a little bit about um, Vietnam and Vietnamese food, and so. Um, they're pretty famous for the street food here in Vietnam. And on the second list, the second article, um, the first uh, suggestion is actually also from Vietnam. So maybe we could read this one too. I don't know if everyone is going to want to travel to Vietnam after we read about the delicious food there. Um, but maybe we could ask Omar, could you read about the spring rolls here in Vietnam? Okay. Spring rolls, Vietnam. Spring rolls play a huge role in Asian uh, cuisine. cuisine. And Vietnam, and Vietnam is no exception. Uh, Vietnamese dish uh, a name uh, Nong Cho, which is uh, incredible. Or uh, sorry, teacher, can you make it uh, more bigger? Oh yeah, sorry. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Uh, pork, sausage, 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 sausage uh, rub it uh, in a, uh, in rice paper uh, with the uh, with lettuce, lettuce. 
Lettuce. Lettuce. Uh, sis, sauce, cucumber, cucumber, Cuc cucumber, uh, carrot, uh, daikon, and mint served with a huge well, secret special uh, say, sauce? sauce. Sauce, it's yeah. sauce. It's a uh, cousin uh, show. Tom so at Yeah, it's hard to pronounce because it's in Vietnamese. Yes. Chao Tom yeah. Quan, I think. Chao Tom Quan. Okay. Uh, you utilize uh, the same basic ingredients, but with uh, shrimp, intent of pork, nim nong, chong. And chow, chow, tom, can, can be found at food, uh, starts and in practice, practically, practically, mm -hmm. practically every restaurant in the uh, in the country. Eat them early in the morning or late at night. Great job. Very good. Um, I know this was a little a bit challenging with all of those different names, but you did have a nice yeah. job. Good effort. Yeah. yeah. So um, I wanted to just briefly show everyone exactly what these different kinds of vegetables are, just so we know the names of them for reference in the future. So I'll show you pictures. Um, this is lettuce. Lettuce here. It's green stuff. We usually make salads with it. Uh, cucumber um, is what people use to make pickles. I'll show you a picture here of a cucumber. Okay, so this is a cucumber. It looks very much like a zucchini, but um, it has a very different flavor. It's usually eaten cold and, um, and fresh. It has a very fresh taste, cucumber. Uh, I think everyone knows what a carrot is, but I'll show you just in case. This is a carrot, an orange root vegetable. And daikon, this is actually an Asian vegetable. And so this is one that I'm not very familiar with, but it looks like it's related to the carrot. <laughs> it's like a, a white root vegetable. So you can see some more images here. And, um, and so they use this in Vietnamese cuisine, Vietnamese food, daikon. Okay, and mint, of course, is like, a, it's a little plant. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what mint is. Yeah, Anna says she's never seen daikon before. I haven't either. <laughs> no, probably like in a Vietnamese restaurant, um, but I haven't ever seen it at the store. And this is mint, of course, which is a very common plant all around the world. It has a wonderful flavor. So um, do, do you have questions about any of the other vocabulary words? We saw pictures of all of those different vegetables so we can identify them in the future. But I think, I think it was pretty clear. Okay, so Vietnam. This is our first destination. And I wanted to ask everyone if they have visited Vietnam before. Um, we have an, a student here on Verbling. She's from Vietnam, but she's not with us today in the class. Um, but maybe I could ask um, Lais, have you ever visited Vietnam or eaten Vietnamese food? No, never. Okay, okay. Um, what about Saiban? Have you tried Vietnamese food before? Uh, not Vietnamese, but the Chinese teacher. Okay. It's close. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's yes. it's it's also Asian. Um, I a yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. Um. What about uh, Carolina? Have you tried? No, I have ever been in Vietnam and even in in. In any Asian country, no. It's, it's a pity. I have to do it. 
Yes, I know. I want to go in the future, maybe too. But have you tried、um, Vietnamese food before? Oh, sorry about.、Um, no, okay. Here in Spain,、uh, there are a lot of Chinese restaurants, but、uh, and the food is very. I think it's very similar.、Mm -hmm. But、okay. no, no Vietnam Vietnamese、um, food. No. Okay. Okay.、Um, well, I know, like in places like California, it's really popular. But where I was from in Florida, it isn't that popular.、Um, it, like Chinese, like you said, or maybe Thai food is more popular, or Japanese. But、um, we don't have too much Vietnamese food. So、um, Anna had a question about minced, and so we can kind of see.、Um, An example of something that is minced. It's um, um, maybe here we can see. So、um, this type of cutting,、um, like this is like sliced, chopped, diced, and then this tiny, tiny, tiny one. This is minced. So、um, something that is cut into really tiny pieces is minced. Can you can you repeat, teacher, please? Yeah, the word minced、um, here. This word minced. It means to be cut into tiny, tiny pieces. So you can kind of see like the picture here. This is sliced, sliced onion, and this is like a rough chop, and this is just a regular chop. This would be diced. So I'll write that here in the chat box. Diced. Um, so、when something's diced, it's like cut into like little squares. But then when something is minced, it's like cut into teeny tiny tiny pieces. <laughs> so you can see, it, like on the far left, that would be minced here. Okay. So、um, the other question. Let me see. Anna had a question. Oh, shallots. Shallots are kind of like large green onions. So I can show you a picture here of shallots. Oh no. I was wrong. <laughs> They're like little.、Um, it's like a mix between garlic and onion. It's a shallot.、Um, so you can see the difference here. I was thinking of scallions. So scallions are these、um, green onions here, but then、um, a shallot is is this one here. So it it kind of has a flavor between like garlic and onion. Um. Okay, and there were some other words here.、Um, minced shallots. Okay, ramshackle. So let's look at that word ramshackle. Something. Maybe I can just show you a picture. It'd be maybe easier. A picture says a thousand words. See something? It's ramshackle.、Um, the definition here is in a state of severe disrepair. So something that's kind of falling apart could be described as ramshackle. And、um, you can see examples here of ramshackle houses that are—they're just old houses that are falling apart. Ramshackle. And the last word was bustling, I think. Or actually, two more words. Okay.、Uh, I don't know, gossamer. Oh,、Is、gossamer. That... Okay. Yeah, that that was another word that I thought maybe I could show you a picture of. It's、um, a kind of fabric、um, that's very very light.、Um, I could show you here a picture. Gossamer fabric. Okay. So it's very light and it's almost like transparent because it's super super light fabric. So、um, here, when it's it's used to describe、um, to describe these crepes,、um, it says that they're gossamer light. So they would be very very、um, very airy, very very light, just like this fabric, gossamer. And did you have another? Was there another word, Anna? Sorry. You said there、yes. were words. Um, bustling. 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 Okay. Bustling. Sorry. Yeah, this is a really great adjective when you're describing、um, the streets, maybe in a city or a very, very busy store. You could say it's bustling with people. So、um, 
it kind of gives you the image in your mind of um, a lot of people like moving very quickly. And um, here it's used as a verb. It says to move in an energetic and busy manner. So some, a place that's really, really busy would be bustling. And we can kind of see some images of a bustling city. We see these where the people are just, it's full of people, everyone's moving in a different direction. This would be bustling. So great questions. Very good. We're learning a lot of new vocabulary also in this in this article. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. The next, our next destination for travel is Vancouver in Canada. So um, maybe I can ask um, Om, no, Omar, I think you read the other page. Carolina, I think it's your turn. <laughs> Carolina, maybe you could read about the um, this place in Vancouver. Craft beer in Gaston, Vancouver. Bring along a healthy thirst for this beer food walking tour through Vancouver's his history Gaston district. The Hopi uh, mm, Amble um, stops at three different craft beer venues and several different brews are sampled at each location. Get ready for a few vibrant Northwest hop bombs and also innovate brews flavored with uh, quirky, I don't know, quirky, quirky? Mm -hmm. quirky in ingredients like liqueurs. Snacks at each venue are food matched with different beers. Okay, great okay. job. Nice reading. Um, so, um, beer normally is made with hops. So, you can see here they mention in a couple of different places hops. Um, maybe I can show everyone some pictures here of what it's like here in this place in Vancouver. Um, so you can see they have a large variety of different kinds of beers and so this is something that um, attracts many tourists who are interested in in um, different kinds of beers, different flavors and maybe the food that goes along with them. Um, but I will show you a picture of of hops or maybe the beer making process. Um, okay, so th these are like the part of the plant that is fermented to make the beer. Hops to make beer. And um, and so yes, <laughs> they they ferment these. Um, this part of the plant and it turns into beer and um, so when it when it says hoppy amble it's talking about the hops that are in the beer or the hop bombs it's it's making a reference to those that part of the plant and um, has anyone heard the word amble before this is yeah. a verb yeah, yeah. To, to walk -y. relaxed yeah exactly great job great. I, I I didn't know happy because I I thought it was jumpy. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> you can kind of like hop is also a verb. It means to jump. <laughs> so when it says hoppy, yeah, you kind of think of jumping. <laughs> okay, but yeah, excellent definition for amble there. So it's kind of like when you're walking along at a relaxed pace. Very nice. Um, and quirky, this is a really great adjective. Has anyone heard of this adjective, quirky? Yes, I guess to me. What? what? <laughs> I'm not sure. Sorry, sorry, Audi. I couldn't hear you. Odd or weird? Yes, yes, something odd or weird. Very good. Something that's like out of the normal. Yeah, great job. So this is another great destination, Vancouver, if you enjoy beer a lot. <laughs> I don't really like beer, so I don't, I'm not really attracted to that option, but um, so far I think the Vietnamese cooking is the most interesting. But let's look next at Istanbul. They have some really, really different cuisine here. And this says exploring markets in two continents. So, like you guys know, Istanbul is between Asia and 
um, and Europe. So um, I think it's Saiban's turn. Saiban, maybe you could read a little bit about Turkey for us. Okay. Yeah. Spend a morning negotiating negotiating for the markets in both Europe and Asia. A spicy bazaar on Stamboul's European shore is sure is a heavy mix of uh, aromas, while a short aromas mm -hmm. yeah. aromas while a short ferry ride away. The uh, Kadikoi market on a city's Asian side is a thoroughly thoroughly local hub with uh, seafood, cheeses, and uh, Turkish pra uh, past pastries, mm -hmm. pastries, and uh, sweets. Uh, go easy on the of pro for preferred free navel as tourists continue for lunch at a renowned 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 uh, Shia and uh, there's a link uh, for cuisine from uh, the far eastern reach. Uh, reaches of uh, Anatolia. Anatolia. Nice job. Very good. Um, so, have you tried Turkish food before, Saban? Oh uh, no, they are my neighbor. Uh, I mean, the Turkey is our neighbor, and uh, it's very easy and cheap to go there. Uh, and play. people are going there, but I never try. Uh, we have some. Uh, we share. Uh, some some uh, dishes, some popular dishes like dolma and other dish that it is very, I mean, uh, it's the same here and in Turkey. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Turkish uh, restaurants here in my city, but I don't like spicy food. They're, they they are very famous. Their dishes are very popular because of the uh, spicy they uh, they make their dish very spicy. Everything is spicy <laughs> in Turkey. Yeah, so I don't like spicy. But the, uh, to be honest, sweet. Uh, they have some baklava. If you have if you have heard before, uh, baklava. Bak it's very yeah, baklava. They say in English, baklava. Yeah, baklava. I love baklava. Yeah, yeah it's very uh, famous here in in my city. It's uh, from Turkey, uh, so they have a really different kind of baklava, and it's very, uh, I mean, it's very delicious, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so where you live, do they make the baklava with walnuts or with pistachios? Uh, I think well, walnuts. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but the Turkish one that you've tried, was it with walnuts or pistachios? Uh, they have uh, both uh, uh, time teacher, both okay. kind. Uh, yeah. Awesome. It's I made delicious. this one time um, at home, and it was so so good. I made it with pistachios because I love pistachios, um, but it was delicious, and it uh, takes a long time to make, so I I only made it once, <laughs> but it was so good. I love baklava. So, yeah, that's a great um. A great recommendation for for trying in Turkey the baklava. Okay, um, Omar had a question about ferry, and Anna answered it already. She's really fast. A ferry is a kind of boat. That's right. Um, a heady aroma is an aroma that's very strong, or a smell that's very strong. Um, and a short ferry ride would be like a short boat ride. Um, and there's a word here. The oft preferred. So let's look at, at Google. We can get um, a definition here. And um, Saiban, maybe you could read this definition for us. Okay. Okay, so preferred. 
it's a verb uh, form to pod before a uh, to to pod before a person for a sentence offer mm -hmm. to offer something. So I pronounced it wrong. It's proffer. 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 Mm -hmm. So um, the noun it says the act of proffering. So um, when we see this word oft before, it's like saying often or very commonly, and preferred would be. Um, like like it said here um, to kind of like to offer to a person proffer um, so it's very very common for for them to give you free samples of the food and Anna said nibbles and to nibble it's like to bite something but to take like a tiny bite and so maybe we could look at this plate here um, maybe we could say that these different um, small amounts of food, these could be called nibbles, just because they're they're very small amounts of food. And to nibble something as a verb is to like to take a tiny bite of something, a very small bite. Yeah. So Turkey, this is a, a really exciting travel destination. Maybe um, you could try so many different kinds of of um, food there. It's really exciting. Um, okay, it's Laius's turn now from Brazil. Maybe you could read about the French food for us. Laius. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on just one second. We had um, Hus Hussein join us. Hello. Hello. Michelle. Hi, Hussein. Sorry, I didn't see you come in before. Thanks for joining the class. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, so yeah, Laius, you can go ahead and read. Sorry. Okay. Fresh is street food. Nice. Sidewalk snacking is usually more associated with Asia, Africa, or Latin America, but the French Mediterranean city of Nice is also famous for its street food. The labyrinthine story of the city is uncovered through local delicacies, including pisaladiere. Car caramelized onion tarts, soca, chickpea pancakes, and tortos de betletes, sweet tarts with chard and pine nuts. Pine nuts. Mm -hmm. Pine nuts. Pine yeah. nuts. Yeah. Artisanal cheese shops and butchers are also included on the three hour strolls. Very nice reading. Nice job. Um, so have you heard of some of these different French foods before? Or are these pretty mm. new for you? Yeah, I think it's pretty new for me. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> um, well, this city in France is, is pronounced like Nice. Nice. And we can nice. look at some pictures. This is the caramelized onion tart that they were talking about. So it's, it's kind of like... Um, like a tart here and they have onions and olives so this is um, a street food that they have there in Nice and we can look at the pictures of these other little street foods that they have and I saw we had Hiroki join us for the class. Hi Hiroki! Yes, hello, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, how are you today? Yes, I'm fine, I just came back. Okay, thanks for joining us. Um, okay, so, so this is soca, and this is um, also a street food in Nice that is made of chickpeas or garbanzo beans, and and they make it into like these little pancakes, and people eat it like this street food. You can see it here. So this looks like delicious this um, French food, and we can look at the last one, the sweet tarts with chard and pine nuts. Um, so chard is like a big leafy vegetable that is cooked and um, and you can see that they put it inside of the tart here. Um, so yeah, so these are different kinds of street food that are available in France in Nice. So that's, it's another um, maybe really interesting um, destination for, for traveling and trying new foods.
And the next destination is in San Francisco, and it says um, North Beach's Italian history. So um, this has some Italian roots, um, but it's in San Francisco in the United States. So um, maybe we can ask Hiroki. Would you like to read this one for us, Hiroki? Okay. Uncover the Italian roots of San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood and spend three hours mailing uh, espresso at Cafe Roma, chewing on still warm ciabatta, uh, ciabatta at the, the Italian <laughs> French baking company, and eating fresh uh, fo fo focaccia. focaccia? Gotcha sandwiches at Mario's Bohemian Cigar Store Cafe. Try to pace your, yourself now because other uh, cor culinary treats to follow include chocolate and fudge at XOX. XOX at Tuffles and uh, anti-pasty pizza pasta and dessert at Cafe Macaroni. Don't go making plans for dinner. Mm -hmm. So there are some delicious options there of Italian food available in San Francisco. And um, Hiroki, I remember that you went to the United States before, right? You were yes. in Georgia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you take a trip to California before? Ah uh, no, I just went to uh, Georgia and Texas. Okay, okay. Um, well, all over the United States and probably all over the world, they have Italian food. So, um, yeah, out of all of these different things like ciabatta, focaccia, pizza, pasta, what is your favorite Italian food? My favorite Italian food is probably pasta. Yeah, I love pasta. And, and pizza, yeah, I, pizza and egg, you know the, I uh, I prefer the uh, kind of uh, thinner pizza. Pizza has two types, Chicago type and the New York types. Mm -hmm. So I I prefer thicker type of pizza in America. Okay, like with a thick crust. Th th thinner, yeah, thinner, a uh, crust. Oh, thinner, type, yeah. thinner. Okay, yeah. like New York. <laughs> New York type, yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Let's ask Anna next. Anna, have you tried, like, Italian food? Can you tell us what your favorite Italian food is? I I love Italian food. Me too. Uh, <laughs> pizza, pasta, lasagna, um, all those things. Okay. Like, all of the Italian food. Yes. Uh, uh, especially pizza. Yeah, I love pizza. I could probably eat pizza every day, and I would never get tired of it. <laughs> um, Ali, what about you? What's your favorite Italian food? Uh, I think uh, the pastas, um, I mean the whole family of the pastas, especially the macaroni that we make here locally is very different from the Italian one. Oh, how do you guys make it? What? Well, Do they uh, make it with like tomato sauce we, or? We make it with tom tomato sauce and uh, also Iranian herbs. We add some herbs to it, so it mm -hmm. so the flavor is a bit different. Okay. Um, let me see. Macaroni. Um, with herbs. Let's see if we can like try to find maybe a picture. Does it look like this? Or uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see the pictures right now. Are you yeah. are you from Egypt? Or no? I can't remember where you're from. No, I'm from Iran. Oh Iran, okay. Okay, let me see macaroni from Iran. Oh, is it like this? Like like a pasta like this? Yeah, they, they also serve it as this one. Well, it, basically there are different uh, kinds of pastas. Uh, the previous one and this one, spaghetti. This is called the spaghetti, right? Yeah, this is spaghetti. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. And uh, the previous one is macaroni, yeah. So, uh, so the, the flavor is different a bit. Okay, wow, it looks really good. It looks like it's maybe baked in the oven. Awesome, yeah. okay, very nice. <laughs> All right, so um, maybe we can ask Omar to Omar. What's your favorite um, Italian food? Do you like pizza? So unfortunately, no. I don't like pizza. You I'm don't like just, pizza? Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of uh, more, uh, a lot of markets uh, that uh, uh, pay the pizza, but I unfortunately a lot of my friends and my family like pizza. Uh, and cook it, but I don't eat it. I just, just like uh, macaroni and spaghetti. Oh, okay, I like the pasta more. Yeah. Okay, nice. Wow, I think you're the first person that I have ever talked to that doesn't like pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a big event. Okay, let's ask Carolina next. Carolina, what's your favorite Italian food? I like every Italian plate, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, Spanish cuisine is very similar to to Italian cuisine, I think. So, yes, we make, um, for example, macaroni with tomato or with cheese with meat. Yes, it's very very similar. Okay, awesome. Yeah, um, Spanish food is also like so delicious. Um, I like how they use a lot of olives and like fresh food. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, fresh vegetables and yes, mm -hmm, this kind of of dishes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay, let's ask also um, Laís from Brazil. Laís, what's your favorite kind of Italian food? I like pizza. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, awesome. And in the part of Brazil where you are, is there a lot of Italian food available? Yes, because there were uh, immigrations from here in the decade of, I think, 50s. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of Italians here. And they open stores like selling pizza and lasagna. So I have a lot of... Uh, place to go here to eat pizza. Yeah, awesome. Very good. It sounds like it's really authentic too if a lot of um, a lot of people have moved there. Very nice. Okay, so if you guys um, need a destination in the United States and you love Italian food, like most of you, it sounds like everyone loves Italian food, you can try uh, San Francisco. This is a really great destination. Um, okay, so let's read about the next destination in London and I think it's Anna's turn. Anna, can you read about London for us? Discovering Rick Lane, London. Rick Lane is known for Bangladesh owned curry restaurants, but other culinary attractions linger in the diverse East London neighborhood. Chinese tea tasting, kosher bagels, and the street food from bustling markets, including spicy chicken wings and slow roasted ribs, all feature early in the delivery two and, and a half hour stroll. Later on, local craft beer and London's best pork crackling with warm apple sauce are other tasty diversions. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Great. So is this a place where you might like to visit in the future, Anna? Uh, yes, I, I like pork ribs a lot and the apple sauce must be delicious, mouth-watering. Mouth-watering. That's a great adjective. <laughs> nice job. Okay, so um, let's read the next one. Maybe Ali, maybe you could read about um, Penang this destination in Georgetown. Oop, Ali, sorry, are you there? Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Am I audible? Sorry? Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay, never mind. I think I have a problem. No, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. I think maybe your um, your speaker isn't working or something. Ali, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go so, ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so maybe you could read where it says hawker food in Georgetown, Penang. Ah, okay. Um, combining Indian, Malay, and Chinese influences, Asia's best street food can be found amid the the heritage streets and lanes of Georgetown, Malaysia. Personally conducted by a knowledgeable local food writer, um, tours meander around the best of the city's hawker stalls and uh, kopitiam coffee shops with dishes including our Assam laksa, fish soup flavored with tamarind. If you're into sweets or mega hits of chili, tours can be individually tailored. Great reading. Thank you. Very nice. So Malaysia is also a really interesting, um, another interesting destination. And I see, Anna, you had some questions about the vocabulary. So let's look first at that word, meander. Um, maybe I can ask Hiroki, have you heard the word meander before? No, meander around the best of the city. No. Okay, okay. Well, um, maybe I can ask... Oh, it doesn't have the definition here. Um, oh, here we go. We can have um, Anna read the definition for meander for us. Okay, meander. I had to follow a winding and turning course to move aimlessly and neatly without fixed direction. Direction. Okay. Just until there. Okay. So, um, so here it's um, the second definition would apply. So, um, when you're talking about meandering through a city, it's kind of like um, like you're walking through the streets at a relaxed pace, and you're kind of exploring. Um, it's you're not um, just walking from one destination to the other, but um, you're kind of going along at a very relaxed pace, yeah, meandering. Um, and, okay, hawker, hawker stalls. Actually, I don't know what a hawker stall is. I think this is um, a place where they sell food on the street, but I'm not sure. We can see some images here for a hawker stall. Stall. Yes, <laughs> there are little stalls that sell food. Um, so you can see this image here. It's like a little cart. I'm trying to open the full size image, but it's going a little bit slowly. <laughs> um, Okay, well, a hawker stall, anyway, it's where they sell food, like cooked food, on the side of the road in like a little cart. And tailored. Tailored means um, like changed to fit you. So a lot of times um, they use this word tailor when you have um, clothes that you, you take to um, a seamstress or a person who knows how to sew, or a person who knows how to make clothes. And they um, they change the like the size of the clothes so that it fits you perfectly, and so they apply this also for the tour. Like if you like some specific type of food, they can change the tour so that it will be exactly what you like. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so great job. Um, very great questions, Anna. Thank you for asking. We learned a lot of new vocabulary there. So um, with the, the last few minutes we have here in the class, I wanted to ask everyone to try to describe some of their favorite food that they've tried, whether it's, um, it's foreign food that they sell in your city or if you've gone uh, traveling, if you've traveled to a place and you tried some amazing food. So um, I'm going to ask Ana first from Brazil. Ana, 
tell us, um, describe like your favorite, favorite, um, maybe foreign food or your favorite new food that you've tried. Okay, I, I just uh, have traveled abroad to the U.S. and and the food there is not that different from the food here, you know. Okay. Uh, but here in my my country, we have some exotic foods. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a kind of palm oil in the northeast of Brazil called dendê, and. Okay, in pause there. just for a second. Pause. Can you write the name? Like as you guys are telling me the new foods, you can write the name, and then I can like I can share my screen to show you pictures, because I think that would be cool for everyone. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so you can go ahead and continue. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, and and then uh, some delicious foods are 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 made there in the northeast of Brazil. Uh, with this kind of palm oil, you know, uh, some street foods. Yes, this one is a carajé. It's a fried scoop made with shrimp, and and this color, orangey, is due to the palm oil called dendê. Oh, and cool. it, it's a delicious street food. You know, that looks quite really, really, really good. <laughs> yes, and, and this cream is called vatapá. It's also a dish from the northeast of Brazil. Oh, okay. No, you you misspelled. Yeah, I think I spelled it. I didn't put the accent. No, like, you put an L instead of a T. Oh, vatapa. Vatapa. Yeah, vatapa. Yes, yeah, it, it it is delicious as well. And bobo de camarão. It's made. Uh, uh, it's made with coconut. Milk and dindi. Yes, this food looks so delicious. Like I have to eat lunch, and I'm so hungry right now <laughs> because I'm uh, looking at the, the, the food from from Bahia in the northeast of Brazil is amazing. Yeah, I would love to visit one day and try all of these different foods. And it's also, so I've been to the Amazon rainforest and. There is a fruit there called cupuaçu, and they make a candy with chocolate and cupuaçu, and this fruit is acidic. No, uh, no, you, you misspelled. Yes, this fruit. It's acidic, and you cannot eat this fruit, but you can drink juice and other kinds of beverages. And there is a candy made with chocolate that is exotic and, and savory, mm -hmm. very tasty. tasty. Wow, that's really cool. Thanks for sharing with us. Yeah, for like I think most of the students haven't ever been to the Amazon rainforest, so to hear about these, like the new fruits and different kinds of food, it's really cool. Thank you for sharing, Anna. Nice job. <laughs> Um, okay, let's ask Ali next. Ali, can you tell us about your favorite food? Like whether it's um, whether it's like a foreign food that you've tried, or what's your favorite favorite food? Uh, sorry, did you ask me about that? Yeah, go ahead, Ali. Been to Thailand. I really love their flavors. I mean, the food flavors over there. But the pro the only problem is that it's all spicy. So I didn't manage to uh, taste, uh, uh, you know, uh, more than just a, just a spoon or some. <laughs> oh, it was too spicy. Yeah, uh, too spicy. Yeah. Um, one thing that I uh, just saw in the streets in Thailand was. Uh, they had a snack that was serving. It was uh, banana and egg. Maybe you can find it in Google. I don't know the name, but they it's a kind of a snack in Thailand. They they sell it. It's a street food. They sell it in. Is it like this? Thailand street food, can I? Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, so it's like banana mixed with egg. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is it really gross like or it's good? Yeah, 
It looks weird. <laughs> Does it taste good? Does it taste good? Yeah, it, yeah, it's pre it's pretty uh, delicious. It is, yeah. Wow. Okay. I I would never think to put those two things together, banana and egg. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing with us, Ali. Very nice. Great job. I'm, um, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. It gets cut off, so I just. Uh, it's okay. I think there's. Mouth. Thank you. Yeah, there's a little lag. I think. There's a little um, like pause before the sound kits to you. Uh, okay, let's ask Omar next. Omar, what's your favorite um, type of food that you've tried? Like maybe a new type of food that you tried? Um, uh, I don't like a lot of kind of food. It's just I have uh, some of special food in Saudi Arabia. Just uh, I eat uh, uh, the rice and the potato and the macaron. The uh, rice and potato? Yes, the kapsa. Yes, kapsa. Kapsa, oh, okay. Yes, it's very famous in Saudi Arabia. It's very famous. Oh, awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, this looks like also a really delicious dish. Yeah. Oh, Anna said that they eat spiders. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes, really yeah, very uh, cool. Kapsa. It looks like a nice thing to try also in the future. Maybe. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, Omar, for sharing with us. And we're running out of time, so we could just like go quickly to Carolina. Carolina, tell us what is your favorite kind of like foreign food okay. that you've tried? Mm, I like I like very much to go to an Indian restaurant mm, quite close to my home and, and there we, we can eat every traditional dish, dishes uh, of India um, yes, yes, this kind of uh, small cassolets mm -hmm. They are delicious mm -hmm. uh, with rice mm -hmm. and and a, and a lot of kind of bread, mm -hmm. cheese bread, uh, garlic bread, and yes, I like. Okay, the, the only thing is very spice, is spicy, but you can order uh, this is without this kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, very cool. I love Indian food too, so this is mm -hmm. one of my favorites. <laughs> nice job. Okay, let's ask Laís. Laís, what is your favorite kind of um, maybe foreign food that you've tried? Um, the best fried food that I tried was in Canada. Uh, it's poutine. It's kind of French fries with a uh, sauce of meat, and they put cheese on the top of it so that the cheese starts to melt. So it's perfect. I love it. Okay, yeah, I think that this was one of the things, if you guys look through uh, the list, maybe it was on this page. Um, I think, in the yeah, it's here. Uh, it's it's in Canada, yeah. They put, like, gravy, yeah. right? Like, gravy and yeah. cheese, and it's on French fries. <laughs> it's like, it, it seems like a really strange mix, but um, everyone says it's really good. So I'm a vegetarian though, so I haven't tried it yet. But that's cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us too in Canada. <laughs> okay, let's ask Hiroki. Hiroki's from Japan, but um, maybe you could tell us about your favorite foreign food that you've tried. Uh, yeah, uh, in America, I've unexpectedly, uh, you know, uh, felt delicious. It's fried okra. Fried okra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yes. Okay. So maybe you could describe it just briefly. Yeah, right? kind of. It's a, a crispy. Uh, you know, the outside of it's crispy and a bit sweet, and it tastes good. So it's not uh, looks like uh, you know tasty, but uh, it's very. It was very tasty to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'd, that's something new that I've tried. This is what okra looks like, just so you guys can see the vegetable. 
So they, they kind of like put breading on the outside and then they fry it. And it's very popular in the south of the United States. Um, they don't have it like where I'm from in Florida, they don't have it. And like in New York or California, you can't really find fried okra. But like in Georgia or Tennessee or Kentucky, they have right. Yeah, very good. <laughs> that's funny that that's, that's like your favorite thing too. That's cool. American food. Well, you guys have done such a nice job, and I encourage you to look also at um, at these lists of different foods from, um, like, they have churros and chocolate from Spain, and um, this is from Morocco, this uh, katafa, and um, from India also they have paneer, um, and gnocchi from from it's like originally from Italy, but they have it from Uruguay here. So um, they have some really, really great um, food options here. I'll, I'll give you guys the link one more time. But um, thank you all so much for using your descriptions and um, for telling us about some of your favorite foods that you've tried in your travels around the world or um, in your city. You guys did a really, really nice job with your descriptions. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully I'll get to see you all soon in another class. Sorry, we went just a few minutes over time. They have it from Uruguay here. So, uh, oh, there's a little echo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, anyways, really nice to see you guys, and hopefully I'll get to see you soon in another class. And thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye.